former star with the Los Angeles Rams at 375 pounds, Leon Baby Bull White. Before Big Van Vader made a turn into pro wrestling, becoming heavyweight champion of the world. I feel no man, and I feel no pain. Before Vader almost went toe to toe with Mr. Feeney on Boy Meets World. Put the Matthews boy down. Come over here and say that. Before Vader passed away at the age of 63 from heart complications. At 407 pounds. Big Van Vader, he's one part Darth Vader, he's two parts Bane, and he's 100% the inspiration behind Billy Madison's The Revolting Blob. Do you know something? He kind of looks like someone I know. A monster by all regards, the man weighed in at 400 pounds and he had a helmet that spewed smoke and was widely regarded as the greatest super heavyweight in pro wrestling history. Now he simultaneously held world heavyweight titles in three different promotions on three different continents and his in ring shenanigans resulted in Rick Foley's ear getting ripped off and his own eye once popped out of its socket. Take a look. Hey. But prior to his career as a global wrestler, well, he was a college football star who briefly played in the NFL. What's going on, guys? It's your boy Michael McCrudden documenting the life and career of Big Van Vader prior to his untimely passing here for you and before they're gone. Now, it feels like we're making more and more of these gone videos. I just feel it's because of the internet. We're all a lot more informed and connected. Now, we have done other wrestler bios in the past The Undertaker, Hulk Hogan, John Cena, that needs an update. And all of these you can find in our athletes' playlists. Now, um, as always, please leave your condolences for his loved ones in the comments down below. Let's get into another before they were gone. Big Van Vader was born Leon Allen White on May 14th, 1955 in Linwood, California. He described himself as a pretty big baby, despite his mother giving birth to him almost two months prematurely. Vader was actually born at around 11 pounds, 10 ounces. My god, baby was so big they had to get it out. I guess. Eh, nah, probably right. While Vader was born at St. Francis Hospital in Linwood, his family was actually living in Compton, California. Now, back in the 1950s, Compton was a little different than the place it's infamous for being today, made up of mostly white families living in suburban bliss. But by the time Leon was becoming a teenager, the demographics had changed drastically and there was plenty of racial tension, also criminal activity. Vader himself fell victim to a few of the city's harsh realities, even experiencing a home evasion at the hands of two men before he was 10. Regarding his upbringing in CPT, well, Vader said, Obviously, you were confronted physically a lot and you either ran or you fought. Most of the time I ran and a lot of the times you had to stand your ground and fight. But as a young kid like that, when you're confronted by superior odds, when you're on your stingray and you're by yourself and two or three guys are coming after you, you try to evade. Now, Vader's father, he was a retired US Marine who was actually responsible for inventing the first electric hoist. Which if you don't know, well, it's one of these. Now, because he didn't realize what he had, he sold the design to another company, then took the money that he made, and he moved his family to Anaheim. Now, despite the move, Vader would be living in Los Angeles soon after, while he attended Bell High School, and at six foot four and 300 pounds, well, he quickly became a football star. He also participated in track events, but mainly focused on America's favorite pastime, good old football. Now, Vader ended up being recruited by 40 to 50 colleges, eventually choosing to go to University of Colorado on a full scholarship. It was there he became a two-time All-American and earned a degree in business administration. In 1978, he was drafted by the LA Rams in the third round. While he was placed on the reserve list during his debut season and injuries would put an end to his football career rather quickly, well, there are reports online that suggest he made it to Super Bowl fourteen, where the Rams went up against the Steelers. Rams lost 31 to 19, and Vader was forced to retire from the sport due to injuring his kneecap. He was contacted in the early 80s by a former college buddy who suggested that his size and frame would work well in the world of pro wrestling. He 
took the advice and joined the American Wrestling Federation, being trained by wrestler Brad Rangans. He took on the wrestling name Baby Bull, which was his college football nickname, and our boy would wrestle his way to the AWA World Heavyweight Championship. Now, despite not winning, Vader found new opportunity on the other side of the world. In 1986, he began wrestling in Europe as part of the Catch Wrestling Association, touring Austria and Germany under the name Bull Power. He also enjoyed a two year stint with New Japan Pro Wrestling, where he would travel to Japan and compete with the wrestlers on that side of the globe. Now, during this time, his wife Grace, she gave birth to their son Jake, who also entered the world of pro wrestling, but a lot later on. It was in Japan where Vader would gain his reputation as a force to be reckoned with in the world of wrestling, becoming IWGP Heavyweight Champion International Wrestling Grand Prix from 1989 to 1991. It was also here that he earned the name Big Van Vader and would sport his black Mastodon mask, you know, the one that spewed fog. Whoops, 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 sorry, wrong Vader. Now Vader would work his way up the ladder, eventually finding himself in the WCW, where he became World Heavyweight Champion from 1992 to 1993. He made his WWF debut during the 1996 Royals Rumble, where he was announced as the man they call Vader. During the match, he took out several opponents, including Jake the Snake Roberts, before being eliminated by Shawn Michaels. He found himself suspended after he delivered the Vader bomb, his signature move, onto WWF President Gorilla Monsoon. In 1994, while wrestling in Munich, Germany, well, Vader was involved in the now infamous match where he accidentally ripped Mick Foley's ear off. Either my memory's convenient or I'm getting thin out. You have to watch it, maybe put it on slow mo but I actually did rip his ear off. Now Vader found himself in serious feuds with various pro wrestlers throughout the late 90s. While competing in 1997's In Your House 16 Canadian Stampede, while Vader snapped the Canadian flag inciting the brawl with Bret the Hitman Hart. The Hart Foundation has hit the ring. Owen and a bulldog now, double teaming, and here comes the Hitman. The incident culminated in the USA vs Canada feud during that year's Survivor Series in which Vader was pinned by the British Bulldog. Now that very same year another incident happened while Vader was touring in Kuwait. During an interview alongside The Undertaker, well the interviewer, he asked the two wrestlers whether wrestling was fake or not. As a result, well Vader flipped over the table and snatched the host by his tie. And uh, well, I'll just let you check it out. They say this wrestling is not for real, is it? Like. You, you act or? So I find your remark and your question insulting. It's not my question, it's somebody who the, 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 uh -oh. Does that fucking feel fake, huh? Now that little freak out, it ended up costing him 160 bucks, but I think it was well worth it. Okay, all, all right. right, just calm down. Don't, hey, we're not here to be insulted. I'm not here to be insulted. Okay. Going into the 2000s, Vader made his rounds in various rings, his grand return to All Japan Pro Wrestling, as well as a short return to WWE in 2005. He focused more on the independent circuit for the majority of his remaining years. Now, Vader was open throughout his career about his struggles with alcohol. In 2007, his addiction came to a reckoning when his wife left him at his home in Colorado. Now, this experience, it drove the wrestler to stop drinking and take it easy. Now, throughout his later years, he suffered numerous health problems. Shortly after quitting alcohol, he had a a double knee replacement that ended up getting infected which left him bedridden for 6 months. After attempting to board a plane headed to Japan, well Vader passed out and he slipped into a coma for the next month. Yeah, the coma, it actually caused him to lose 112 pounds. And regarding all these struggles, well Vader said, Did I really think that after misbehaving for so many years that I was just going to quit and go through a couple weeks of misery and be done with it and be healthy and happy? For me, that didn't make sense. If you want to get your life back, this is what you have to do. Vader discovered the Wounded Warriors Alliance. Now, while this organization is intended for military veterans, Dave Rover, a wounded Vietnam vet, he recognized the wrestler's shortcomings and invited him to rehabilitate with the organization through physical and spiritual therapy. While his wrestling did continue, Vader tweeted in 2016 that he was involved in a car accident when his automobile flipped over on the road. Soon enough, he announced that he had been diagnosed with a congestive heart failure due to trauma suffered during both his football and wrestling careers. In 2018, he went through two separate heart surgeries to help treat an arrhythmia. And unfortunately, well, on June 18th, Vader passed away after over a month of being in the hospital. And this was due to complications with pneumonia. Now, he was only 63 years old. The wrestling community, they mourn the passing of the legendary star, with many tweeting out tributes, including Mick Foley, Booker T, Sting, Kevin Nash, Ric Flair, also his son Jesse, he tweeted out, A 
Around a month ago, my father was diagnosed with a severe case of pneumonia. He fought extremely hard and clinically was making progress. Unfortunately, on Monday night, his heart had enough and it was his time. As for the rest of the story, well, the rest of the story lives on through his work and his family because this is before they were gone. My name is Michael McCrudden, and we have uh, a few other bios you might want to check out if you enjoyed this one. I'll see you guys in the. I'm really getting sick of it before they were gone. Before they were famous and a little more positive, you know? Alright, see you guys in another video.